one and only off the bottom is coming to with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Ghostbusters Plasma Series Spangler's Neutrono Wand Prop Replica. Now, back, I want to say seven years ago, Mattel had the license to be doing Ghostbuster Prop Replicas. And they released them through their Maddie Collector site. They did the Neutrono Wand, the uh, PKE Meter, <laughs> the Ghost Trap. If you've been around my channel long enough, you know how well that went. Even doing the Ecto Goggles. But all of those props go for considerable amounts now in the aftermarket. They're long since sold out. And they were basically the best prop replicas that we had ever gotten of these iconic pieces of equipment. But now that Hasbro has the license, we're able to revisit at least the Neutrono Wand and how it looks many, many years after the events of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. This is a replica of how the Neutrono Wand looks in Ghostbusters Afterlife, specifically Spangler's Neutrona Wand. For the package though, absolutely fantastic. You've got this little middle section right here. It does slide off. You got some good art and everything throughout it, warnings, things of that nature, instructions, things that it can actually do. But what's nice is it can slide off and in watching some interviews with people that have worked on the movie, have been in charge of props and things of that nature, what Hasbro has recreated with this entire thing is really very screen accurate. All the way down to the packaging here. As you can see, it kind of looks like a metal box, which is how the actual Neutrona wand is basically found in the movie. It's found in a box like this. Obviously, it doesn't say Hasbro on there, and it, I don't know if it says Neutrona one, but you got, like, warning strips. I love the little Ghostbuster logo right there. Come around to the back, and you can see that continues on. You got little hinges right here. I mean, it, it's amazing how all the way around, it does have that recreated look. I, I, I'm just blown away by it. Uh, now, it doesn't open like an actual metal container, but you can open it like that and then you have all the stuff on the inside of course mine is empty because i'm going to show you the whole thing and you don't need to see it now but i love the fact that they went that extra mile to even replicate how the box looks that the neutrona one is found in in the film absolutely fantastic but we're not here to take a look at the box so without further ado let's get this out here and see how cool it actually is and here is spangler's neutrona wand opened up and out of its packaging. Now, we don't really know a ton about the story of Ghostbusters Afterlife, but obviously we know that Harold Ramis is no longer with us. So for this to be in the film is quite interesting and really makes me hopeful that the spirit of Egon is going to be throughout the film and subsequently that of Harold Ramis. Hasbro has done an amazing job with recreating this. One thing that is really worth noting is that when the team for Hasbro wanted to do this, they actually went to the set and did 3D scans of the actual film prop. That way they could make this as authentic and accurate as possible. I'll get into the minute details of why that is important here in a bit, but as you can see, this is it. What's wonderful about this is the fact that it includes a display stand. That's one thing that the Maddie Collector one never did. There's a lot of stuff that this does that the Maddie Collector one didn't do, but that's just to start. So taking a look first at that, setting the wand off to the back section. That piece is rolling away. I'll get to that one here. Uh, it's just a fairly uh, flimsy, for the most part, plastic, but it does what it needs to do, and that is prop it up. It comes in a couple different pieces that you do have to assemble. You can see like this, and then this. You just plug all that stuff in there and then plug it in. It's perfectly easy to do. You don't even really need instructions in terms of doing it. I do like how they have a Ghostbuster logo right there. That's really nice. It's molded in this uh, gray plastic with the uh, little uh, elevating pieces in a little bit darker of a gray, but it looks good. I, I, I like it. Like I said, I mean, it is fairly flimsy, but it is what it is. Uh, now, one thing that I do wish is that they could make that where you could have other ones uh, because you can take this and use it for the original one. And here is the original one. We'll take a closer look at the comparison between the two. Here's some uh, exclusive dust for you because this has been on my shelf for a long time. But you can see that it displays nicely with that other one as well. So um, 
I would like to get another one of these. If anybody gets this and doesn't want it, let me know. I'll buy it off of you. But you do have that. You also do get this extra piece as well. Now, as of right now, we do not know if they're going to be doing any other prop replicas. But what's nice about this is that it allows you again to have a little bit more of an authenticity to it. This is the battery compartment. You rotate this, take this out, and here are the batteries. It takes three AAA batteries. You just put them in there, plug it in. But this is the standard cap for it. You got a lot of really nice paint detail on there as well. This also can be used. And when you put that on there, what that allows you to do is if you had a proton pack, this is the area where the hose would attach to. So if you are a cosplayer, if you already have a proton pack and you want to use this, you can. Or fingers crossed, Hasbro releases a full proton pack. That would be amazing. We got teases of maybe getting one with the Maddie collector line that never actually came to fruition, as we all know. So that's cool to see that they thought ahead to give you something like that. Uh, I'm going to leave this in just for uh, the time being. But here we have the Neutrona wand. And this is spectacular. It really, really is. I didn't think I could like the original Maddie collector one less by getting this but i actually do now like i was talking about the amount of detail that they captured in this because of doing 3d scans really helped to make this uh, absolutely wonderful recreation the best way that i can illustrate that and i i hope this comes across come in oh yeah you can see it right here is sculpted in detail that kind of resembles rust. Some people don't necessarily know this because they don't grow in the Midwest. But anywhere where you grow up where you get like snow and your car rusts, a lot of times what you'll notice is that the paint on your car will bubble up from rust forming on imperfections in the metal underneath the paint. And you can see it, like I said, I mean, normally it's gonna be a smooth sort of thing, but when that rust starts forming, this is essentially what you get, a little bit of a bubbling of the paint. You got in a couple areas, you can see a little bit of it right along there. Um, I'm trying to see where else. Uh, there, you definitely have it. Uh, you have a little bit uh, right here along this edge or you couldn't see it sorry uh right around this little edge area all of that is recreated beautifully by the fact that they used like i said 3d scans of the actual prop the other thing that i i've noticed in this is there's a, a heft to this I'm, I'm gonna bring this one in again uh there's a heft that this one has that this one doesn't you can see they're roughly the same in terms of the overall look obviously because they're going to be the same for the most part but there's a heavier weight to this one than that maddie collector one uh the actual weight i'm not sure of but it's noticeable and part of it is because they used a lot more metal in this this or aluminum i should say this section right here is made out of aluminum this is this is all these different switches all have it. Uh, this little gear section right here is made out of metal. The screws and everything are all done out of metal. This is a metal clip. This is a metal clip. So again, all of that comes together. You, I mean, you even got, I don't even know. I can't tell if that's plastic or, I mean, because that is so darn good looking. I can't tell if that's metal or I'm talking about the little screw there. I'm not sure if that's metal or, or if that's plastic because it just looks so good. Uh, but you can do the cold touch on these and feel that it is metal and like i said that gives an extra amount of weight to it you can also see all the amazing paint on here the scratches around the edges that's what you kind of can see in terms of some of the extra wear this is a replica of, a, of the prop that is basically 30 years old so again old compared to how it looked with the ghostbusters where it's going to be a lot cleaner and a lot newer looking. You can see the scratches and the handle, the dings around the actual box itself. Uh, even here with this uh, clippered minimatic thing, that is on here as well. And it's worn out. You can see that the paint is much more kind of faded throughout there, whereas that one isn't. Uh, might as well just do some of these comparisons 
while I have it out here now. Bring this around. These are both really large. You can see the uh, the Danger logo has a lot of wear on it. Also, it's a lot larger looking, which does look really good. One of the biggest differences that you're noticing is the handle. Uh, this is the way that it originally looked. This is the way that it looks now in the new movie. Now, this is just a rubber piece, but it's also really very nice looking. The amount of wear, let me get this guy out of the way. Uh, the wear that they put in this is really very nice, and it has a good feel to it. It's a rubber but it's it's not a rigid plastic so it feels good in the hand that's really nice to see as well let's see looking at some of the other stuff i mean you can see a lot of the stuff is really very uh, similar obviously these are little metal are these metal uh, yeah, these I think are metal, but uh, I think that the little screws around them are plastic, whereas all the hardware on this, this is all metal as well. So that's nice to see. The other thing that you're seeing that's different between the two is the lower section. This now has been replaced with this sort of wood grain looking aspect, which uh, again, this is plastic, but the detail on there is so very nice that it does look like a piece of wood i mean that is truly outstanding to look and it feels good in the hand one thing that i never really liked about this granted it was obvious i mean accurate you hold it and then you put your hand up here oh you couldn't see because i was too far zoomed in so you put your hand here but i'm right-handed so i feel like i want to hold it like this for the control aspect that feels awkward in my hand and i always thought that and then you uh, activate the stream by pushing this button i mean for me i mean that's a, that's just further away so I, I never really liked that one thing that i like about this and i don't know if it's, if it's necessarily the reason why they did it but the having the clean thing around here it feels good in this hand while i can still grip this one and still activate and you can hear that that sounds so much nicer than nothing there's nothing there i i want to see these are all just plastic except for maybe the little switches but that i mean i do really like how that feels in hand one other thing to kind of note is that this has this extra wire here that the original maddie collector one didn't have now i'm not sure the exact reasons for this but it's just a little a wire piece that's uh, attached there and i'm curious actually why that's like that i mean who knows we haven't seen the movie yet but that let, let's let's forget about the overall looks this is what you guys want to see you want to see it activated now the th really cool thing is that again paying extra attention to detail hasbro decided to actually recreate the startup sequence for this my little section here is moving around if you went like this flipping that flipping that flipping that it'll turn it on but it won't activate. Same thing, let's turn all that off. If you flip this one, then this one, then this one, turns on, won't activate. The actual startup sequence, and this is the way that it was on the actual prop, which is, again, really cool to see that they incorporated it into this. You flip the bottom switch. You can see lights turning on. Well, mostly that one, so do that again. And I like how it slowly fades on. That's nice. And now we got this guy, which activates the intensity beam. You got the little light here that turns on. Also, the indicator right there. Now, and you can see that's blinking. You got that hum, which is beautiful. One thing that I really like is that the sounds in this are very crisp and they seem loud. I love that. And I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear that rattling. This thing vibrates. And now the Maddie Collector one did, but while I set this here, I'm gonna bring in the Maddie Collector one again. And I'm doing a lot of comparisons here. So this, oh, well, if you leave it on, that turns off. And then you gotta cycle through it again to turn it back on. So there we go. All right, now this, Listen to the sound in this. There's no hum, there's no vibration, but the sound sounds cheap. Whereas this one, 
Let's just do a comparison of the activation. So, let's do the uh, old Maddie collector one. And now the new one. And that hum is amazing. One thing also that I really like is this is a very bright light here, whereas this one is a lot more muted down. Again, showing the age of this. So it's like you have the, uh, the Ghostbusters 1 and 2 version and this. I mean, so it's a wonderful recreation. Let's power that down on both sides. Now, uh, you can also see this right here. You could adjust the intensity with it. It kind of just goes up and down a little bit right there. This one, you can also do that as well. You got this little light section that goes all the way up and then you can bring it all the way down. And you can hear, hopefully you can hear it, as you make it go up, the vibration goes along with it. And you can hear kind of that the vibration is louder. Hopefully you can hear it. I know there's a lot of noise, but But you can hear the intensity lowering. I absolutely love that. I think that's amazing. So let's crank this up a little bit. And now the other thing is this piece. I, oh, 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 shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm messing things up. This little trigger section right here in the film, it extends. And you pull this trigger by doing that and that is really nice you got this really long i'm going to turn the whole thing down so that uh, it doesn't accidentally do anything that was accurate to the film now maddie collector they included that as well so bringing that in let's turn that on you have the lever right here it's in a different spot than it was over there but this was a retracting sort of system so you can see that it extends out just like that and then to bring it back you push it again the way that the actual prop worked though wasn't like that um, and that's just going to turn down again uh, the actual prop was manually locking it back in it didn't have that retraction sort of thing so the fact again that they recreated that here which is how the original prop was is amazing amazing just absolutely amazing i also like how this piece right here is on a sort of a swivel so that it can kind of move along with that when you bring it in you can see how it's kind of like that and then you move it i like that it doesn't put any stress on the hoses or anything which are really good quality both of these feel really nice and i, I really do appreciate that so that's a really cool again attention to detail now let's start this thing up Get it going. Let's pull this back. And now let's bust some ghosts, shall we? So you push the little button that says intensify, or well, the activate and then intensify, and... Now it's going to be hard to see. But let's turn the lights off. You can see everything lighting up nicely. Let's activate that again. Look at that absolutely gorgeous now i'm gonna hold this down for a little bit because this is something that's also really cool as you leave it on eventually it overheats and it turns off then you have to start the whole thing up again so again then you can throw that ghost now let's increase the intensity the vibration, it's hard to, I mean, you can kind of hear it. Less vibration, more vibration. That's really cool. I absolutely love that. There's a little bit of light coming in from the uh, outdoor window that I have still on, so you can still kind of see this. The other thing that this can do, that the Maddie Collector one never could because it didn't exist yet, is if you remember a few years ago, we got the Ghostbusters video game, which Dan Aykroyd had always said basically serves as a sequel to the uh, original two films. Now, 
I don't know if they plan to incorporate that game into the canon of Ghostbusters 3. But they do include it in this, which to me is kind of interesting that they would do that. Because they're putting all this accuracy in there. Why put in something that might not be in the movie? So I'm wondering if that would be in there. So you have this little button right here. You push it and... Ooh, that turned green. And now, listen, you have a churning sort of effect. And when you blast, you can hear it. It's the slime blower upgrade that was in the video game where the slime blower bit could be used with the actual Neutrona wand. Now, that wasn't the only upgrade. You got a little bit of a glow here every now and then, which is kind of weird to see. Then, ooh, it's blue. And now you can hear like crackling, like a stasis field, which again, was one of the upgrades. And of course, you can increase and lower the intensity on this as well. And if you leave this going, I know I, this is kind of loud and I'm having to talk louder, but if you leave it on, it will do that as well. It will overheat, which again was something that the video game really kind of extenuated in it. So uh, we got the regular, yeah, we got the regular blast. We got the slime blower. There's the stasis. Here is the uh, collider. I forgot the name of it, not Hadron, uh, but the collider thing. Oh, and look at the LED lights on here. That is clean, super clean. Let's push that again and bring this in. Doesn't really look so much like there's individual LED lights in it, like the Maddie Collector one. So let's bring in. Let us bring in that Maddie Collector one. You can totally see the lights here. And you, you can hear, listen to the rattle of this. As opposed so much cleaner sounding. This thing just honestly has it all. Little switch. You got the slime going again. That's gonna be hard to see. I I think that's amazing. And I wonder if it has I mean, I mean I, I don't know, but I wonder if that's like what that this extra hose is for and I, I don't know but to me like i said it's weird that they would include those little bits if it wasn't going to be in the movie now i don't know if it's going to be in the movie but that would be super cool if the video game was part of the ghostbuster canon i guess that's amazing uh come around to the bottom one more time uh, i forgot to kind of mention this you also have this little piece right here which is metal that you can use to hook up to a uh, proton pack as well and you also have this little clip right here which uh from what i understand that was actually put in there because when it was slotted down it didn't sit flush with the proton pack which is what they wanted to do so the prop people actually added this on there to kind of balance it out subsequently it became a part where you could hook it to your belt so that wasn't the, the belt thing was not necessarily what this was intended for but it has a good added function um this thing is simply breathtaking it really really is I i'm blown away by how good of a job uh, they were able to replicate this everything on it is screen accurate it's sound i mean everything on it is accurate now the the best part in my opinion the best part is that this is a 100 dollars prop replica the Maddie Collector one, am I doing that the wrong way? Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to go one way, but I kind of like doing it this way so that uh, you can kind of see what's happening. Now, let's see, maybe I'll go the other way. Uh, the Maddie Collector one was 
yeah, see that 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 I like doing. That way you can kind of see it. Uh, the Maddie Collector one was like $130, which for the time was a really very good price, in my opinion. This, which is insanely more accurate looking, granted, it doesn't look like the original Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. But this has a level of detail unlike that Maddie Collector one. Include the fact that you get a base, you get this little extra bit in case you ever want to attach it to a proton pack, and the fact that they have extra sounds from the video game built into this, I would have expected this to be more expensive than that Maddie Collector one. This is actually cheaper, $99.99 as opposed to that $130 that we paid for the one from Maddie Collector. Absolutely unbelievable, in my opinion. Simply unbelievable. I know that this has been a 25 minute long video of me gushing about this. Most of you know that I'm a huge Ghostbuster fan. And the fact that I have not been able to stop playing with this and smiling while I'm doing it is a huge thing for me. People collect props because it connects them to something visceral in a film. I can hold this in my hand and feel like I was one of the Ghostbusters. That's why I so badly want a proton pack. I got all the other stuff except a proton pack. So I don't care how Hasbro does it. If they release it in a store, if they do a HasLab thing, it needs to happen. I think HasLab is a perfect option for them to give us that. So someone send Hasbro this video so that they can see that fans want it. Now, right now, at a lot of places, I believe this is unfortunately sold out. I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store, and when I ordered it later when I went that day, it had sold that it, it had said that it sold out. So I don't know if I got one of the last ones, but I got it, so whatever. But it's also sold out through Hasbro Pulse. I would guess that when the movie comes out in 2021 there will be more of these so just keep your eyes open guys and when it becomes available don't miss out on it don't wait get it as soon as you can if you are a ghostbuster fan this is an absolute must-have and well worth having in your collection so all that being said for right now like i said it is sold out but i'll put a link down in the video description to big bad toy store where you can keep your eyes on it and hopefully in time, it'll come back in stock. Just keep looking. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. Once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, do me one real quick thing. And that's just hit that thumbs up button. That one really small gesture really does go a long way towards helping me out. And I would really very much appreciate it. Also, I got to send a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, you can check it out by going to patreon.com slash optobotamus. Or if you want to join YouTube memberships and get everything right here, and just click on that little join button right down there. Any amount of support is greatly appreciated. And as always, remember that the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.